In 1776, the Witta Galley was triumphantly launched from London for its maiden voyage to Africa. It was a three-masted galley ship that measured over 30 meters in length. It was able to travel at a speed of 13 knots and carry up to 30 tonnage of cargo, or approximately 500 slaves. The British were the main sellers and buyers of slaves during this era, so a trade ship would travel to Africa, then to the colonies in the west. They went to Africa to pick up the slaves, and then to the colonies to sell some of the slaves, and pick up supplies to return to Britain. This form of trade was known as triangle trade, because of how the ships traveled in a triangular pattern. The construction for the Witta started in 1715 by the British Navy in order to expand their slave trade. The Widow was launched in 1716 for its maiden voyage, captained by Lawrence Prince, but the ship was then tragically intercepted on its return to Britain by pirate captain Samuel Black Bellamy. Samuel Bellamy was a simple man who became a sailor and left his home in England to travel to the British colonies to make his way in life. When he heard of all the treasure that ships were able to obtain in the Caribbean, Bellamy dropped everything that he had and set out to claim a fortune for himself. After failed attempts of digging up treasure, Bellamy turned to piracy and joined the crew of Captain James Hornigold. During his tenure as part of his crew, there was a mutiny and Bellamy was chosen to be captain. During his time as captain, he and his crew captured 53 ships. One of those ships was the Witta Galley. When Bellamy heard about the ship, he stalked it for three days in order to capture it. It is thought by historians that Bellamy spoke a famous speech about those he plundered. They rob the poor under the cover of law, forsooth, and we plunder the rich under the protection of our own courage. Bellamy, like most pirates, fought for freedom and democracy, but instead of using as much violence, Bellamy lived by the rule of fight smart, harm few, score big. However, on his return to Cape Cod on the Witta, the ship was caught in a storm and pushed around the sea, unable to control herself. The storm then pushed the ship closer to the shore, where it capsized and ran aground. There were only two known survivors of the shipwreck of the Witta, and neither were of its captain. After the ship wrecked, it began to sink into the soft sand of Cape Cod. Only a very small amount of gold on the ship was able to make it to the shore. Everything else on the ship tragically sank into the sea and the sand. She waited there for 270 years before the widow was reclaimed from the sea. Barry Clifford was just a boy in Cape Cod when he first heard the story of the Witta and Samuel Bellamy, but it stuck with him for the rest of his life. As a young man, he left Cape Cod, but returned years later. When he returned, he began a construction company and became well off in his life, but he wanted more adventure. He then created a salvaging business in order to have that adventure. He became quite renowned for his salvaging, as he would try to do any job that anyone asks of him. Because of his sense of adventure and his willingness to try anything, Clifford started to search after Cape Cod's hidden treasures. He found out that people will try to steal the treasure that Clifford found without doing the work. Clifford ensured that he registered for a claim before sharing his triumph with anybody. Soon, a friend of his recommended that Clifford search for the hidden Witta, which Clifford thought may be a good idea remembering the stories from his youth. When Clifford was out after Thanksgiving drinking, others convinced him of truly trying to search for the widow. As soon as possible, Clifford began to research where the widow could be located. By using the cartographer Siberian Southfax maps, Clifford was able to reduce the vast ocean to just a small area that he needed to search. Still, Clifford needed help to find the widow, so he enlisted the help of famous treasure hunter Mel Fisher. Fisher was known for finding many shipwrecks off the coast of Florida. Many times, Fisher had to fight against others and the Floridian government in order to claim that shipwrecks were his. Clifford invited Fisher to Cape Cod for advice and to search for the Witta. Fisher brought Fay Field to the Cape to work the magnetometer. This is a machine invented by Field that can sense when it's above a large amount of metal and used in treasure hunting. Using the magnetometer, Clifford was able to locate the Witta's approximate location, 
but it was still buried under the sand. Clifford pushed water down to move the sand away from the shipwreck and was able to make a dive down the wreck. The widow's bell was recovered as well as some of the treasure it held that includes gold, silver, and numerous gems. We had no idea of what we discovered until we started going through the collection. Our coin collection goes all the way back to Ferdinand and Isabella, right up to 1717. This is uh, one of our uh, recent concretions that have just come up and we've x-rayed it. And we know that there's about 60, at least 60 silver coins in here along with um, gold dust and chopped up gold jewelry. Many believe that this is the first true pirate ship that has been excavated. From henceforth, Barry Clifford has been known as the first man to excavate a pirate treasure ship. The found artifacts are on display at the Weighted Pirate Museum. The discovery of the Weta wreckage opened up the opportunity to prove and discover pirate lore. It was always thought that pirates were a ravenous group of people that killed and stole to get what they wanted. This view of them isn't the exact truth, though. Yes, there were those that did what they did out of bloodlust, but most fought out of freedom. The British Navy was known to be rather oppressive to the lower crew members, and there wasn't much you could do about it. Instead, those that were oppressed became pirates as a way of fighting back and gaining their freedom. The fact that these coins paid for human beings on board a ship that was a slave ship captured by pirates, a third of whom were of African origin, most of whom were former slaves. However, the media has twisted the view of how we see the entirety of pirate culture. Things like Pirates of the Caribbean have shown the side of pirates that wasn't as common. A closer representation of pirates would be Captain Blood starring Errol Flynn and the Pirates of Penzance. It shows that the pirates were a democratic union of people. However, much of the lore of pirates are no longer known, which is the cause of this misrepresentation. In the end, it all comes back to the Widda, and how it was built, stolen, and eventually sank into the sea. However, its knowledge was not lost forever because of Barry Clifford and his hunt for the Widda. He was triumphant in reclaiming it and returning some of it to the surface. Until he's sober, put him in the brig until he's sober, put him in the brig.